HD Smartcast. You are listening to a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hi, I am Abhinav Kaul, and welcome to this edition of Mint Guru Portfolio. Neil Behel bought his first stock, Infosys, at a very young age of 15 years, and has never looked back since. He founded his first company, a sub brokerage, when he was just 22 years old. Today, at 37. Neil runs his portfolio management services Nijin Capital which he founded in 2017. The founder and CEO of Nijin Capital follows a special situation style of investing which was championed by legendary investor Warren Buffett and American academic and hedge fund manager Joel Greenblatt. Neil shared his portfolio details, investment strategy and financial journey for the special mint series Group Portfolio. Let's listen in. Hi. Welcome to Why Not Mint Money. a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth so let's get started on your money journey can you start at the beginning uh, with your family details your educational background okay so you know we come from humble beginnings in that sense we are not uh, coming from money as such and uh, i have done uh, schooling in mumbai I was actually born and brought up in Mumbai and uh, I went to IES which is the Indian Education Society for schooling up till uh, 10th standard then I went to HR college yeah so then we went uh, then I went to HR college for mm-hmm. further studies and from HR college uh, I went to SP Gen to do a course which is uh, on the family business management course uh, and uh, how did your uh, initiation into stock markets happen so it was uh, just by chance there is no i mean for example there is nobody in my family which has a background in the stock market uh, so it i'm probably the first person in my family's history to get into the stock market so it just happened by chance i think i was uh, going through cnbc it was just cnbc was on probably one fine day and uh, back then i think it was udayan mukherjee and mitali mukherjee and i was just zapped on um when i saw the prices going you know updating every second it was just something which was you know at something like a love at first sight you just knew it that uh, you are attracted to it and they <laughs> and after that there was no turning back now at what age was it it was very early i had the luck of starting very early this is in at the age of 15 i started investing Okay, and uh, as in, how were you investing? You were investing in your uh, through your father's account. Yeah, yeah. So basically, my father set it up for me. Okay. And uh, initially, I was just trying to do whatever I could understand, you know, buy one share of Infosys and sell, you know, buy and sell kind of thing without having any kind of guidance, no mentorship. There was no internet as such. I mean, no, there was internet, but uh, there was not like today, you know. So it was all new. So just started doing whatever I thought was the right approach at the time. and was it uh, out of your own uh, pocket money or no no to so that set up the account and he gave me some you know very little amount to to do and see whatever i could do i was just you know so i i started with the ipos of uh, my real journey started with the ipos of uh, yes bank and petronet i think they came at a similar time and they both were super hits and uh, when a young kid ends up making decent money of course on a very small base but when you start making decent money in percentage terms you get even more hooked on right and these are the first two stocks yes bank and petronet no not the first two stocks but the first two uh, big wins let's say okay and what was the first stock that you bought i think it was infosys okay got it and what attracted you to ipos at that point of time Well this is like really long back in history so I don't uh, I'm right. sure about it but uh, uh, being connected in the market I must have seen these two IPOs coming and uh, doing a little bit of analysis at the time I knew that uh, both of them were coming near par value and both of them had very good prospects so we thought okay let us I had a friend also so his name is uh, Rishikesh Mundargi he also invested so it was a good journey that time together and uh take us through your initial investment days uh how were you investing what was the strategy like you know, i was a very typical let's say a retail investor there was no real strategy it was whatever you like you buy 
यू सी समथिंग ऑन टी वी यू बाय बजट में समथिंग गुड कम्स यू बाय सो दैट कैंड ऑफ स्ट्रैटेजी बट बेसिकली नो स्ट्रैटेजी जस्ट टम्बलिंग अपॉन थिंग्स बींग लकी मोर दैन हैविंग अ प्रोसेस बिकॉज इंडिया इज स्टिल अ ग्रेट स्टोरी एट दैट टाइम इट वॉज ऑल्सो अ ग्रेट स्टोरी राइट सो वॉट एवर बैंकिंग वॉज न्यू एवरीथिंग वॉज न्यू सो वॉट एवर यू बॉट वेंट अप लार्जली इफ इट वॉज अ डिसेंट कंपनी सो वी स्टम्बल्ड अपॉन विनर्स बट इवर लार्जली डू टू लक आई वुड नॉट से दैट आई वॉज सम वन लाइक अ बफेट और समथिंग नॉट इवन क्लोज आई वॉज जस्ट लाइक अ यू नो फ्लोटिंग थ्रू टाइम मोर ऑल एस Right. So you started uh, at 15 years of age. What was the year? Uh this would be something like uh the year 2000 or 2001 something like that or 2002 approximately. Right, right. So you avoided kind of uh, that uh, tech burst uh, of 2001. Yeah, so, I mean, I didn't have any money <laughs> anyway to lose, uh-huh. but right. uh, yeah, you're right. It was uh, after that situation was over let's move on to your professional life if you can take us through that so i was very clear right from the time when i was uh, about 15 actually i'll even rewind before that so even when i was in my 7th grade and 8th grade i was always hustling in school uh, i would sell old stamps i would sell uh, posters uh, at that time there was a, a magazine called sports star and in that there would be a a poster in the middle so right, i would right. go to the uh, you know the divas and big i would just spread. get that poster for free ha <laughs> ah, correct so there were good cricketers you know so rahul dravid and so on so i would just take it out for free and i would go to my class and try to sell it for whatever like 20 rupees 30 rupees and at that point of time having 20 30 rupees uh, was a big thing right mm-hmm. so i always had this thing that you know you can hustle so i never after school got over and after stock market started uh, I, i never had the thought that i am to go and do a job so i was very clear that i have to begin some way or the other in the stock market so i thought i'll be a full time investor but uh, that was not easy because you need money to be a full time investor so i started as a sub broker and this was this happened when i was in college in sp gen so I started while uh, in the last year uh, of SP Gen, and I so this Nijan Capital was born as a sub broker at that time. Okay, and which year was it? This was uh, I think 2007. Right. Okay. Ah, uh, so then came like the crash of 2008. So, uh, what was the experience like? Did you burnt your ha- fingers in the market? Oh yes. Um, 2008 was not very kind to anyone. Uh, same for someone like me who was very new and uh, you know was just doing things on his own whatever he th- felt was right so i saw the portfolio go down by a huge margin but uh, one important lesson was learned at that period of time that while in 2008 uh, the portfolio went down 2009 2010 11 12 and especially in 2014 we realized that it's okay portfolio going down is okay Uh, as long as you do own decent companies and uh, as long as you do your sip you're going to be fine because india is a very good story and that fear went away uh, as i saw the portfolio started coming back and after that day i was not bothered one bit if the market is going to fall 20% or 50% it's okay and of course i try my best to be a, a little bit in cash when the markets would go down but mm-hmm. uh, i was never afraid anymore so that was a big event for me 2008 crash was a big event because it took my fear away completely okay uh, do you remember what was the uh, drawdown in your overall portfolio in 2008 it was easily 70% i am pretty sure it was approximately 70% and uh what was how was the journey after that i mean uh, you have a pms now so from sub broker uh, to a pro, uh, to a pms uh, Okay, if you can take us through the journey. So the, the journey was, you know, as, as I said, these cycles happened. Like mm-hmm. 2008 was the cycle of uh, the subprime crash, and then you know you had uh, currency crisis in India. You had a European debt crisis. Every couple of years, something kept happening. Mm-hmm. So the idea was simple: uh, just own good companies and just do SIP and advise the clients to do the same. 
uh, advise the clients against going for FNO and uh, things like that and do normal investing. And uh, things worked out pretty nicely. A uh, little bit later in my life, I was introduced to a new way of investing, which is a kind of an extension to value investing, which is called special situations investing. And that really changed the trajectory of my life. The minute I understood how special situations work, everything changed for me. Uh, what year was it? I would not know which year it was exactly when I started doing special situation, but it, let's say uh, it would be something like 2014 or 2015. Okay, okay. And when would you say uh, a serious investing start happening for you? Yeah, serious things started happening since the time uh, we started doing a special situation. And okay. Actually, special situation was something which was discovered by my brother. Uh, he was, uh, uh, you know, working in London uh, at a hedge fund and uh, he came across this Joel Greenblatt and his story and he came to me and he said, Neil, this is a good thing, you know, we should invest, but if you invest in this kind of technique, and uh, he introduced this to me and the rest is history. Uh, we both started our journey. So today he manages his own fund. He has an AIF and I have my PMS and a couple of other AIFs. So we, our journey started because he introduced me to special situation. And uh, if you can take us through this strategy, how does it work? Yeah, so uh, special situation is basically an advanced way of doing value investing. Now, let's say in a value investing, you say that I would like to buy a business and I would like to buy it at a discount. That is the basic value investing technique, what Warren Buffett made famous. Uh, what happened then is that the internet came and everybody started getting information about a business. So your good businesses started trading at a very high valuation. And whichever business was available at a cheap price, it was largely cheap for a reason. There was some corporate action, uh, corporate governance issue or some, you know, industry, uh, industry going through a bad period. Something or the other would be a reason for a stock to trade in a normal value, a normal uh, market, a stock trading cheaply. Is basically, there's some issue with the stock. So special situation is the kind of a corporate action, something like a delisting or something like a demerger or something like a promoter changing altogether, which completely changes the DNA of a business. And it gives a investor who's paying attention enough time to kind of figure out before the market does that how the DNA change of the business is going to change the valuation of the business. So for example, you know, there are multiple such like, for example, the biggest special situation in the world is Berkshire Hathaway. Warren Buffett, before he took over Berkshire Hathaway, Berkshire Hathaway was a failing textile business. It was cheap. Okay, and uh, it was uh, a normal value investment. So a lot of people would have bought Berkshire Hathaway, let's say five years, 10 years ago, would have made no money. They would have lost money consistently. But at this point of time, when Buffett came and took over the business as $14 per share, it changed the DNA. He got into chocolates, he got into furniture, he got into insurance, and then suddenly the business changed direction completely. So this is what you call the special situation, where some event happens which changes the DNA and that change in DNA changes the trajectory of a business and then you have to value that business differently. So you have ample time to figure out and uh, if you can become an expert at it and do it consistently, you can create a huge amount of alpha. So Buffett, when he was a fund manager, would do exactly this. Before Berkshire Hathaway, when he was a fund manager, he would do only special situation. And uh, our inspiration was a, a a fund manager called Joel Greenblatt. Now, both Buffett and Joel Greenblatt focused on special situations. What is interesting that Wait. both of them in different time frames, Buffett managed money in the 1960s and Greenblatt managed money much later, probably in the 1990s. Both of them had a 12 year kind of track record for fund management. Both of them never had a single down year. They never lost money doing this kind of investing. So it was something which really uh, opened my eyes to investing. Right. So what would be the average holding period uh, under this scheme, under the strategy? So the special situations, our target is not to compound money. Mm -hmm. The target is for the undervaluation to go away. 
<laughs> that re-rating is the target. And once the re-rating gets over, you you are better off if you are a special situation specialist basically then you are better off finding the next new special situation so in my opinion about 3 years 2 to 3 years is a good holding period for a special situations fund in a particular position okay and uh, can you take us through your schemes that you offer uh, so we uh, are very clear that in the pms for example we don't want to confuse our clients so we have only one scheme which is a special situation scheme okay so we have one scheme in the pms and we have an aif where we invest in startups that also is only one you know one direction and what is the fee structure uh, for your pms and aif so we are very again you know clear in how we want to charge fees we don't want to charge fees uh, unless until the client has first first made money right so we don't charge this annual fee we don't charge expense ratio we don't charge you know any kind of a hidden fee or something we charge only mm-hmm. profit share which is charged once at the end of every financial year we charge 15% profit share uh now coming to your personal portfolio uh what is the current asset mix in percentage terms uh, let's say equity debt gold real estate and alternative asset class yeah so i am fully invested in uh capital markets on the equity side and in startups we have i have nothing in let's say real estate so i have a house but i don't count mm-hmm. that as an investment yeah uh, but on the investment front nothing in gold nothing in real estate nothing in debt okay so what would be the break up in terms of equity and uh, uh, startups okay 70% in equity and 30% in startups got it and how's your equity portfolio divided in terms of market capitalizations large cap small cap mid cap so it's uh, it's almost entirely at a personal level it's almost entirely in mid caps and small caps okay so you don't have any large caps no okay and do you invest in international stocks i do just to i you know wet my feet but nothing in a serious way i we don't have the bandwidth for doing research you know the kind of research that you require to make money especially in the mid caps and small caps in us for example we don't have the bandwidth of course i can buy google and i can buy apple but uh, we won't be creating alpha doing that for creating alpha you need to buy the small caps the mid caps over there but and for that we don't have the necessary bandwidth currently and in terms of performance over the years how would you say your uh, equity and your alternative asset class uh, portfolio has performed so on the equity side the performance has been pretty nice although i have never really figured out what my personal portfolio's performance is in xirr terms for example but uh, on the pms front we have uh, publicly available data which i can share with you yeah so last 2 uh, years the cagr is 59% the last 3 years the cagr is 39.35% this is in the pms this is your pms uh, and your uh, personal portfolio on the equity front the personal portfolio would be somewhere in the same region i would think okay okay now one strategy that you would say has worked for your portfolio over the years and one that has not so the strategy that has worked for me is to believe in india i think uh, we as indian investors have certainly won an ovarian lottery today there's good things happening in india and there are certain areas like you know something like a qsr for example i'm very very bullish on uh, so uh, betting on qsr has worked very well for me and largely doing special situation and betting on india has worked the best for me okay any strategy that didn't work uh, not really uh so far we've done good so nothing that has not worked as such but uh, yeah i mean trading has not worked well for me in the past so i stopped trading altogether so i just focus on investing now okay all right uh and coming to sectors do you have any view any sectors that you are bullish on or any sector that you are bearish on so i'm bullish across the board right so Uh, as the wonderful late mr junjunwala used to say it's a buffet it's a buffet right eat whatever you want to eat but make sure you don't overeat and i think uh, that 
I will always remember. Uh, it's kind of shaped my thinking that everything offers opportunity in India for the entrepreneurs and mm-hmm. also for investors. If you are half decent today at anything, whether it is like you know we doing financial services, there is amazing scope. So I'm I'm bullish across the board. I'm most bullish on QSR. I think the quick service restaurant space will mm-hmm. grow twenty percent the entire industry for the next many years. So I'm most bu- uh, bullish on QSR. Uh, bearish? I'm not bearish on much. Uh, so uh, I mean, coming to the stocks, uh, any any specific stocks uh, which have contributed most to your portfolio over the years? Uh, so there have been many actually. So something like uh, Max Healthcare, we have done very well on that. The D merger played very well. Something like Green. Uh, Green panel, the D merger did very well for us. CG Power is a great example of something doing well for us. So these are a few names which I've done well. There are actually a lot, many number of uh, things that I've done well. And if you go back all those years, mm. Petrolet and Yes Bank did amazing for me on the percentage terms, but it was very very small base. Right. So we are looking at uh, uh, a stock that has done very well. I mean, that has contributed most to your portfolio. So. These would be the stocks: Max, Max Healthcare, Green Panel, and CG Power, right? That's right. And currently, how how many stocks do you hold in your portfolio? We t- typically like to own between twenty and twenty-five stocks. So we have done the maths around this. Uh, let's say you have a two-stock portfolio, right? So if you have a two-stock portfolio, you have, you have a ninety-six percent risk, basically a non-market risk, basically something going wrong with the one business, and your portfolio can just you know melt. Now, if you take two stocks to four, four to eight, and eight to sixteen, for example, when you reach the number sixteen, your non-market risk reduces by ninety-six percent. Now, above this number, if you keep adding more stocks just for diversification, the diversification bit is done at sixteen. So, you know, so we are also very clear that we want to follow the maths and not have any random number in the mind. So as per math, sixteen is the number, but we typically uh, own twenty stocks in the portfolio. Okay, got it. Uh, now Neil, coming to some personal finance details, uh, how many months of emergency fund do you provision for? Um, so good question, actually. Uh, mm-hmm. So have a house is the most important thing for me because if something happens to a breadwinner, the family should not. Be you know uh, on the road, for example. So house is most important. So we did that. Now in terms of uh, emergency fund, how many months? Uh, I've honestly not thought about months as such, but we have a small lump sum which we have you know uh, in case uh, needed. So I would think it will be like a five six months. Okay. Uh, five six months is enough for an emergency fund, I would think. And in 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 which form are you keeping it? In FD. Okay, bank FDs. But this is not an investment. This is like your, you know, this yeah. is you consider that this is not part of your wealth. Right. Right. And uh, what does wealth mean to you? Um, I have never thought about this question. To be honest, um, I, it's I'm just perfectly happy with uh, whatever we have. Like, even if I have more wealth tomorrow. Is not going to change me. I, I still have. I drive a 13 year old car, you know, right? So I don't feel the need to buy a new car because my 13 year old car works very well. I don't have any fancy watch, for example. I don't wear a watch. So uh, fancy things don't. Um, I mean, I have no need for doing fancy things in life. But uh, but yeah, I mean, if you are doing something, then you keep doing it. So wealth is a byproduct of. Just having a good amount of you know you're just busy doing your work, so that's a byproduct, and it would be nice, right, to achieve something in life, but it's not because you want to make wealth. It's largely for the kicks of it, that you want to see what you can do in life. Right, right. And how do you identify yourself as an investor? I, I would think that uh, I'm a little bit too fearless. That I really do would not, and I think that may not be a good thing. Uh, I'm just not bothered if the market would. Hit a lower circuit or whatever. I'm just very clear about India, so I don't know whether that that's the right that's the right approach or not. But uh, I'm I, I would say I'm an eternal India believer. Yeah, so I think Neep, that's it from my side. Okay, thanks so much. Take care. That's it for today. 
If you have any questions, you can write to us at mintmoney at the rate If you want me to cover any specific topic, DM me at at the rate Abno call it Twitter. To stay updated on this podcast, follow HD Smartcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and LinkedIn. To listen to more such podcasts, log on to hdsmartcast.com or suno nai nazariye se. This was a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. HD Smartcast.